Since the early days of her career, Dr. Julia Rowland has been on a singular mission to improve the quality of life for cancer survivors. It started with the first position she held in her postdoctoral fellowship at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. There she helped to develop and then lead the innovative post-treatment resource program, which years later is still providing critical resources to cancer survivors. While at Memorial Sloan Kettering, along with her mentor, Dr. Jimmy Holland, she co-edited the first handbook of psycho-oncology. I think Julia was talking about patient-centered care before that was even a, a term. Um, you know, she was bringing attention to these real life aspects uh, um, for people that, you know, it, it wasn't just about their body that was impacted by cancer, their lives were impacted by cancer. Um, and again, I think it was her research and her work and her advocacy um, for, for years, for decades, um, that I think helped to change the, the landscape of how people talked about cancer. Through the years, Dr. Rowland has helped to develop and shape the field of psycho-oncology, which has resulted in the social and emotional needs of cancer survivors being addressed. She has worked as a clinician, researcher, and teacher, and has also been a tireless advocate for cancer survivors. In 1990, Dr. Rowland moved on to become the founding director of the psycho-oncology program at Georgetown University's Lombardi Cancer Center. And in 1999, she took a newly created position at the National Cancer Institute as the director of the Office of Cancer Survivorship, which Ellen Stovall was instrumental in creating. Dr. Rowland led the office until 2017. During her tenure, she championed investment in cancer survivorship research and raised public awareness about the health and quality of life needs of the growing population of cancer survivors and their families. The mentorship she has provided through the years has shaped the careers and the work of so many in the field and has helped to expand the cancer survivorship movement. I was just so struck by Julia's energy, her positivity, the way people sort of spoke about her in using legendary type terms. And she not only helped me champion an, an, an effort to um, kind of create a research program around cancer caregiving, but she really mentored me and helped me to sort of take that forward, um, sort of cheering me along the way. I am so grateful to Julia because she has been an, an inspiration for over 20 years of my life, not only from her clinical work, her publications, her research, her mentorship on my uh, doctorate degree, her uh, advice. We tended to think patients only needed our attention during treatment before that. And when she came into play, she made that area visible and uh, attended to uh, patients' needs after treatment, not only physically, but also psychologically, socially, professionally, to uh, get back to their normal life as best as possible. During her distinguished career, she has served on various volunteer boards, including NCCS, where she is a current board member, and has published broadly in many prestigious medical journals. She currently works as a senior advisor at the Smith Center in Washington, D.C., a nonprofit health education and arts organization. I, mean, I think she, she's for, for decades has done a, has been an example of how you can merge science with being an advocate for change um, and, and, and how to use science to make life better for people. See, she's this big profile woman uh, in which she is a pioneer in the U.S. and worldwide, and still she's, she's so humble, so discreet, so gentle, and so generous at the same way. She's helped us all recognize that cancer does not happen in isolation, that it has a ripple effect on families, on places of work, on communities, and I think that as, as a field of scientists, 
practitioners, advocates, and survivors and their families, I think we all owe a debt of gratitude to Julia.